So anyway, as long as you're all comfortable, I just want to verify. Um, also, I just wanted to let you know that we are doing one longer set instead of two shorter ones. And that said, uh, with comfort in mind, if you need to get up and use the restroom or grab a refreshment, feel free to do so in between sets. You know, I mean in between, yeah, sets. So um, yeah, we're, we're a house concert and also a party, and we're all happy to be here. And um, how many people have never been here before? Wow, Whoa. that's like, that's a, a lot of people. So yeah. how did you find out about this show? Probably this amazing group we're having? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming out. I'm so glad that um, you discovered our space. Um, we've been doing this for about 15 years and we present music of all genre. We have, um, we love Brazilian music and we feel so lucky to have Charo Das Trace coming here. Um, and um, so, what else? I just want to say we're also live streaming the show, so if you want to tune in online, and you can actually watch the show again when you get home, if you feel like it. Um, but I want to welcome the live stream folks. Thank you for tuning in. Hooray! Um, so uh, Churro Das Trace is a, is a group we have presented several times in the past, and it's always been a um, distinct pleasure. Um, we're, we feel so you know happy, and we feel so lucky to have them here. And um, of course, you know, it's big in our minds that Eduardo is not here because um, their father, they have lost their father. So this is, um, you know, obviously that, that is something that everyone's thinking about. Um, and um, we are thrilled to have Christina here with us and they're traveling around in this incredible vehicle. And they are traveling with two dogs. I don't know if you know that. Um, so yeah, this is, um, quite an event, and um, without further ado, I'm just going to stop talking and welcome this incredible group. Let's welcome Charo Das Trace. <laughs>
such a long time and getting to travel and know better each corner of this country and it's there's mu much much more to to know to see but it's been amazing we feel very very lucky and it's very good to be back here it's one of our favorite spots <laughs> or one to nothing by Pichinguinha and Benedito Lacerda and now we are going to play a composition by Elisa Afrevo called Apimentado Portuguese soul. 
Instrumental fado, usually they call it guitarradas. Mm -hmm. So it's the jam sessions with instrumental fado, so guitarradas.
Portuguese in Brazil, not Spanish. And the mandolin that Elisa played is the Brazilian mandolin, but it, it was developed in Brazil by Jacó de Bandolin. And it's a mandolin with a Portuguese guitar shaped body. So with that, she can play vibratos and, and some techniques that are not common to the mandolin. And now she's going to play an instrument that she never played before on our USA tours. It's the cavaquinho. So the Portuguese people, sailors, you know, so they took the braguinha, this instrument from Braga, Portugal, to Hawaii and it became the ukulele. And they took the same instrument to Brazil and it became the cavaquinho, or cavaco. And the story of cavaquinho for us started when we were little kids and I started to play flute. I had a volunteer teacher that came to my school mm -hmm. because in Brazil, music's not part of the school program. So there was no way to study music if this volunteer hadn't come to my class. And he brought a keyboard and, and rehearsed a choir with our class and I loved singing, but I loved seeing him play and I wanted to study music and then I started and the girls wanted to play to to be part of it because my dad bought a pandeiro again he stopped playing after high school and and he would play with me you know in in weekends and after a day of working he would come back home and play and then when Elisa was I think six years old because she didn't know how to read or write she asked me to write a letter for santa and <laughs> and that she wanted a bandolinho <laughs> and it, it, we I say bandolin in portuguese bandolin but she said bandolinho she mispronounced it and, and i wrote bandolinho we didn't know what a mandolin i don't know we didn't know what a mandolin was <laughs> i guess that that confused santa a little bit because she got a cavaquinho instead <laughs> and and then she later a few months later she uh, maybe almost a year later I then don't know. yeah i, I think remember. you were already seven when you went to the conservatory that's not yeah but uh, it was six in december but my birthday is February. Yeah, but so then I was seven. Yeah, you were seven. So when she was around <laughs> seven, and it's not a whole year, <laughs> not a whole year after, a few months later, she, she went to the conservatory and her teacher said, well, you're playing melodies. Why don't you try the mandolin? I think this is what you want. And she, yeah, I like it. <laughs> but the cavaquinho always had a special spot. Yeah, then I, I completely forgot about the cavaquinho and never played it again. And the tuning is completely different than the mandolin. But I, I never, fortunately, I hope it continues this way. <laughs> I never got rid of any instrument, so I always kept my first cavaquinho at home. And, and I, every now and then I learned to play one or two other one tune of the cavaquinho by ear because to me the notes the tuning makes no sense at all <laughs> compared to that this so I always played by ear and I thought since this year we were gonna be such a long time in the US and uh, the previous tour Corina would mention about the short ensemble the complete short ensemble and tried to explain what a cavaquinho was because of the ukulele, I thought maybe if I bring it, we can show it and people uh, could see and hear the cavaquinho. And I thought, uh, what tune, what piece we could play? And then I, there's this my favorite piece by the um, the greatest cavaco player of all times in Brazil. His name was Valdir Azevedo. We just celebrated his. Uh, centenary. centenary last year, I mm -hmm. think. We were so honored that uh, during our live feeds, our broadcast every Thursday, his daughter uh, got in touch with us. She was said that she was watching our broadcasts, and to us, this was 
the most amazing, biggest honor we could have. And she started to tell us stories about her father. And uh, we chose this piece, which she told us that her father composed in honor to his wife, to her mother. It's called Você, Carinho e Amor. You, Affection and Love. By Valdir Azevedo.
is a composition I, I did for in honor of our grandfather, Mayer. And uh, he used to live in the same town as we did. Well, we used to live in the same town as we did. <laughs> and he, had, uh, he used to live in a ranch, a little ranch. And he was very, his hobby was to have plants and trees, actually. He had cashew trees. He had all kind of fruits, the fruit trees and uh, a vegetable garden. And I loved, my favorite thing was to go to the ranch and climb the trees. But there's, there were some trees that were his favorite ones, like his uh, treasure. And those were the jabuticaba trees. And uh, those I was, nobody was allowed to <laughs> climb because he said, used to say that we would uh, uh, ruin the little flowers. They are tiny flowers. They, Jabuticaba tree, they grow from, right from the bark. The fruit. The fruit grows from the bark of the, the tree. It is really beautiful when it was the season for first the flowers. So all the tree, the bark of the tree gets white with flowers and then all black with the Jabuticaba fruit. fruits. So those were really special for him and he had two Jabuticaba trees that were even more special. They were very rare kind, called olho de boi, which means a bull's eye. So it's a, a, a jabuticaba that is bigger. Uh, it, that's why it's called bull's eye. It's really, really beautiful and, and very rare to find. So, so when I compose, so like this a regular jabuticaba is about the size of a marble. No, very small. Yeah. yeah. And the special kind can get to the almost to the size of your palm, mm -hmm. wow. so it's yeah. bigger. Maybe a golf. Maybe a golf. golf. We're not oh. very good. Yeah. At that. <laughs> 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 and then he composed this this yeah. tune, yeah. this tune, Grange. for him. And uh, this tune is, it was it was funny because this uh, past uh, two Thursdays ago we celebrated our two hundred broadcast on YouTube and I could see uh, in 2018, thank you, 2018, 2019 when I started to compose this piece. It, this piece is really, uh, one day a friend of mine said I don't understand this piece and, and then I realized that this piece started, it was something like a meditation kind of piece that you're not supposed to understand. It, it, this piece just goes and goes. And I, I found when we were looking for videos for our celebration of 200 broadcasts, I found videos of old broadcasts where when I was starting to compose this, but I didn't know that it was going to become a tune and nobody knew it. But I, when I was doing sound check, I heard and I said, oh my god, the, the, the old boy being born. <laughs>
when you are listening, when you understand the lyrics, you may think that we are speaking to a boyfriend because we say, we are leaving, don't be sad, my love, but actually we are talking about Brazil, to, about our country, about our people, of the nature. So this is about our beautiful country. All right. Passa para mim também. Is there a story behind the score? <laughs> Just caught up. She, uh, Abby gave it to our dogs, and then I, I was holding it, and I forgot. <laughs> 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 and I came with it. Uh, puppet. Oh, okay. <laughs> play the pandeiro. So pandeiro is this instrument here and this pandeiro used to be the instrument that our father played. I don't know how many of you yeah. saw us yeah. before. Yeah. 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 And, uh, so you know for 19 years he would sit right here and yeah. play pandeiro, whistle, smile and he was great. He was the main driver of our USA tour and in Brazil too. And he was our best friend and, and the person that most believed in us and more than ourselves <laughs> most of the time. And uh, And we lost him for COVID. In 21, oh, COVID. for COVID, and uh, it was really difficult, it, it is really difficult, and I was telling Abby that we, we thought we were not going to play music again, it, it was too painful, and it's like how can you continue a band that for 19 years had a percussion player, you know, that was really part of it. How can you continue? It's not the same anymore. And it's not the same anymore. It changed. But we, after a few months, we saw that even though we don't play for millions of people like Beyonce, <laughs> <laughs> our music makes a difference in the world. Yes. And, uh, yes. to us and, and saying please come back we want to see you guys playing again and it, I, won't, I won't lie to you it was the hardest thing we've done is to uh, go back on a stage without him and, and having to play songs that for 19 years we played with him and then suddenly there is this break and we wait for the pandero to do a little thing and He's not there, so it was really hard. But we we came back, and and then in in 22 we decided that we wanted to do a U.S. tour, and we started to plan it. And because we also had a motorhome that was parked in Cape Cod, and we said we need to go and see if we still like touring if not we need to get rid of the rv and everything but as i started to talk to people about this story it started to make us happy again that yeah. we would be on the road you know and we get a vi an artist visa that is good for a whole year and then we i said well we, we always pay this fortune to get this visa and we only <laughs> stay a few months. <laughs> Why don't we just stay the whole year if they allow us to do so? And and because we are a, a good a good crew of pirates <laughs> and we stick together, everybody said, Yeah, let's go. So 
We arrived in May 25th of 2023 in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. That's where we started. We had many challenges, uh, also because our dad is not here, so he was a very good in mechanics. <laughs> and then, suddenly, I have to do things with my two assistants. <laughs> and so we, we had this motor home that was a 1999 RV. And uh, we sent it to the mechanic, we paid him to look over everything and repair everything but it wasn't enough it was sitting for too long and then we had several problems we lost our brakes in Boston it was a total mess and then we I then our mechanic said you can't do the tour you can't go around the country with this RV you need a newer one and if it was before the pandemic, it's okay, but it was sitting for three years, it's too long. So I found a motorhome on, on Facebook that was very <laughs> far away, that was in, in North Carolina, and we were in Massachusetts. But it was a good price, and uh, one of our friends lent us the money. Then we did a crowdfunding, and our fans, and I know that you guys also helped, so helped us to buy this new newer RV that is outside. <laughs> and we've been traveling safely and it's been amazing, amazing, amazing. And this tour is uh, fulfilling its purpose. It's been very good for us and I'm very, very happy and proud that we were brave enough to take this challenge and do this tour and I know that we can do it because we have wonderful people all over the country like you guys that are here for us supporting us and hoping for the best and sending good energy so thank you so much <laughs>
they they made an arrangement for the string orchestra and it, they put a video on YouTube. In 22, I think it was. And now, because of this arrangement of this piece, uh, we were invited to play a whole concert with a symphonic symphony orchestra in August. Holland, Michigan in August. In August. So you're there. <laughs>
by Tom Jobim. It's called Agua de Bebe. And so when my, my dad, my dad was not a musician. He used to play pandeiro and timba when he was in high school. And bossa nova was the thing that he most played in samba. So when my parents met, he was playing a lot of bossa nova in that time. So he was a bossa nova boy. And uh, we grew up listening to bossa nova and to samba and many styles of music. So many people think that our father forced us to be musicians. But no, he would very much prefer that we were mechanical engineers like he was. But we decided to be musicians, you know, and then he had to learn how to play shoto music and this whole thing started. But let's go with Agua de Bebir. And if you guys know the lyrics, please, please sing, sing with us. <laughs> Thank you. 
Obrigada. So we'll play two more songs for you and then we'll be done. And before you go, please don't forget to sign our guest book. Put your name in your email here, please, if you are not in our email list yet. Because we are going to be in so many places. Uh, we are going to be here in this country until the end of the year. So we have many more miles to drive and many more places to see and play. So maybe you have friends in these areas. Uh, Washington State, Montana, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, and many, many places. So maybe you can help us to promote. <laughs> Thank you. 
was Charidas by Vittorio Monti. And uh, the past week, this week on April 23rd, was the, we celebrate in Brazil the National Shorter Day. And uh, we like to play this piece in our concert because that's how short music started. People in Brazil would play the, used to play the European music in their own way, in the Brazilian way that they learned by ear. Some learned by the score, but they added their own rhythm, their own feeling. So that's how short started. First, before it was a genre, it was a language, we say a language, an accent, an accent a way of playing uh, European music. And it, although nowadays Shoro became a, no, later no, Shoro became a, a genre, until nowadays Shoro is a language. So the three of us that grew up playing Shoro music, we can play any kind of music, but we're, we're going to play it as Shoro. <laughs> <laughs> we always have our accent, like when we speak English, there's always the Brazilian accent. But it's English, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, so we are going to finish with Aquarela do Brasil and Brasileirinho, which is the, the medley that we like to finish our concert. It's our tradition. It's our little tradition. <laughs> I'd like to invite you guys to visit our YouTube channel too. We are also on Instagram and we are preparing a series of videos about Shuro history and about our history too, to post on YouTube because we don't have many things in English, so this is going to be in English, so people can know more about Shoto and the composers. So stay tuned, subscribe, please. We are, we are almost getting to 200,000 subscribers. Oh. Did you help? <laughs> also, we'd like to say thank you so much, Abby and her family, for doing this. something that happens there and this is something that my dad admired a lot about Americans is that you guys have such a strength and determination to do things so yes why not turn your house into a little <laughs> theater and bring the musicians that I like to perform here and support them why not you know so you guys you do so much and you have such a sense of community that we always admired so you guys come here and everybody brings a dish and then everybody dines together and it's amazing the power that community has and and how you guys know how to value that and to and to be together so we really, we really love this. This is one of the beauties of this country. And I'm very grateful again for being here, for all of you being here with us for this tour that we have. And uh, I hope that we get to see you guys in the future again here in the same way.
Or in Brazil, yeah, sure. <laughs> We're not gonna spend another January in this country. <laughs> <laughs> December we fly back. <laughs> it's lovely, but not in January and February. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> sorry? We were in Florida, yes, in January. And I have to say that weather was wonderful. It was nice. Yeah. The Florida's done. But we were afraid of all the alligators <laughs> and, other <laughs> things, and other things too. But, not, not <laughs> yeah. but you know, it was good. We went to the we went to the Florida Keys this year, and it was very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. but but you know, we can go in another time of the year. It doesn't need to be January. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. And uh, please sign the guest book. Don't forget. I'm sorry we're low on merch. We are waiting more to come. The, these things, they are embroidered in Brazil. My aunt embroidered them for us. Mm -hmm. Our own designs. Is it, so they're on our own designs. But we have very, very few, yes. almost nothing. And some CDs too. And these are prints of Elisa's art. So many of them were used for our CD covers. Um, but there are some others too. Yeah, so many of them are related to music and, uh, and also pieces that we play uh, yeah. that are recorded in the album. Or even for if they were not used. Or for example, uh, this is this is the are the leaves of Pau Brasil. Pau Brasil is Pernambuco wood, which is the best wood to make violin bowls. Mm -hmm. So the, the leaves that you see are they leaves of Brazilian <laughs> trees that are used for instruments, instrument making. And it's because of this, this tree, this is a, just the leaves, but because of Pau Brasil, that Brazil is called Brazil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Brazil means, uh, you know, red coals when, when the coals are amber, are got mm -hmm. hot and they're they're just red, they're not on fire. So when Portuguese uh, cut this tree, they saw it was very red, and they said, ah, this is the uh, an amber tree. You know? So that's what Brazil means, in Brasa, that is, that's red. And they named the country after it, because there were so many trees. And they used to cut them down yes. and bring it to <laughs> Portugal. To dye clothes. To dye clothes and, red, and red. everything. And these last two pieces that we're going to play together, the last one is called Brasileirinho by Valdir Azevedo, the same composer that I played the tune on the Cavaquinho. And first we're going to play Aquarela do Brasil. You hear in the US, you know it as Brazil, by a most amazing composer, one of the best we had in Brazil, called Ari Barroso. He was a big influence for Antonio Carlos Jobim, there are several um, comment interviews about Tom Jobim talking about him and, and, and saying how much inspired he was by him. And I think he's, he was also a shorter player. He has many shorter compositions, Ari Barroso. And I think we love to finish our concert with this piece because I think it's so amazing. It's something from heaven a composer or an artist being able to compose a piece like he did that even the first two chords Four you friends. immediately teletransport to Brazil. Mm -hmm. So if you've never been to Brazil you just listen to these two chords from the intro but the whole piece and if the lyrics are beautiful in Portuguese but even if there was no lyrics you, just the melody is like pure Brazil. So we really, we never get tired of playing this piece by him and, and so Viva Arribajos! <laughs> <laughs>
So this is the most famous shuttle ever. <laughs> <laughs>